Welcome Sam's talk. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Chuck in, scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2-0. Oh, Paul Giroux, hit it all, scores! Hey, Brady! Tim stuts on cross, Kachuk scores! The captain, Brady Kachuk, buries it with 1.18 to go. See you later, go Sam's go! Sense Talk. My name is Brandon Plant and I'm your host. Tonight, Ottawa took on the Washington Capitals in the Battle of Capitals as Ottawa looks to bounce back from a loss last night to the New Jersey Devils. Now look, for Ottawa tonight, not much changed in terms of their lineup. Tim Stusla would remain out with an upper body injury, while Zach McEwen would draw in for Dominic Kubelik, who's dealing with an illness. Now Jonas Corposalo starts for Ottawa, while Charlie Lindgren starts for the Washington Capitals in a must-win for the Caps. So let's head to the game. <laughs> I don't even know how to talk about this part of the game. It feels like deja vu. It feels like I've done this. Oh wait, I have done this. A quarter of the videos this season. It's actually mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. How this continues to happen to Ottawa. Less than five. I mean, I can literally cut a different part of my video from 20 other videos this year. And put it here, and you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. Because guess what? As you already know, or you can already guess, less than five minutes in on the second shot of the game, of course, the Capitals would strike first to make it one nothing. Pacioretty takes advantage of a turnover from behind the net from Mark Kaslik. Milano from behind the net forces Kaslik off the puck there, sort of. Uh, regardless, still a bad player there for Kaslik, who has to be better, of course. Uh, can't lose it along the boards. The Capitals take advantage. Pacioretty puts it home. one nothing Capitals. That is four straight games. I mean, this is... What do I even say, man? This is actually insane. This is four straight games. Ottawa's given up the opening goal on the first or second shot of the game. That's now 21 times this year. Ottawa's done that as well. That's more than a quarter of the time so far this season. They've given up a goal within probably the first five minutes, but definitely on the first or second shot of the game. That is actually mind-blowing. I don't know if that is an NHL record, but if it's not, it has to be close to it because that is absolutely bonkers. So... Uh, I mean, what else do I say other than the goaltending has been a huge issue this year. And if you don't believe me on that point, well, look at that stat and that will tell you you're wrong. Now, after that, not much really happened in that first period of play other than a really funny moment. I guess the eclipse came a little early uh, in the Capitals Arena in Washington as it's for some reason, I don't know how... There was sunlight coming through from the bleachers. You know, one of those entrances for the concourse, right? Um, in the 300s. And, you know, it's unbelievable. It was literally blinding Jonas Corposalo. It looked like an early eclipse. Uh, tomorrow's the eclipse, of course. Um, so I guess a bit of a preview for Jonas Corposalo. Don't look at the eclipse. And Corposalo was probably saying that to himself when the sun was literally beaming him in the eyes. Um, but luckily they figured that out quickly, but that was a funny moment. I've literally never seen that in my life. A goalie getting blinded by the sun in an indoor NHL game. So I thought that was really interesting. So anyways, not much else happens in that first period other than, of course, a brutal goal where we leave the slot wide open, a turnover from behind the net, and a goal on the opening shot or two. And this is something us Sens fans have gotten far too familiar with. I mean, it's actually insane. I can't say it enough. It's absolutely insane, that stat. I mean, we'll talk about it after the season when everything is said and done. But my goodness, that is absolutely insane. But yeah, nothing else literally happened in that first period. And we go to the second period of play. And, you know, Mark Kaslik giveth and Mark Kaslik taketh as he ties it up at one. A beautiful backhand just over five minutes into the second period of play. And Ottawa ties it at one apiece. A beautiful play here from Jacob Trickerin, who enters the zone, draws the defender towards him, opening up a lane for Kaslik, who takes advantage. And he basically gets a mulligan here. He gives up a goal. He gets a goal. So we're even on that front as Ottawa ties it at one apiece. Parker Kelly as well draws an assist on this goal as Ottawa ties it at 1-1. Now at the halfway point of this game, the shots are literally 8-8. So I cannot stress enough how boring this game really was until like the third period, frankly. Um, there was really not much going on. The Capitals, you can tell, were really playing a defensive game. As I already mentioned, a must-win game for them. They are in that fierce playoff battle right now. Um, so they were really playing a tight defensive game. They didn't want to really give any offensive uh, chances to Ottawa. And they did a very good job at that, of course, other than that Catholic goal. But we continue uh, through the midway point of the game with a couple minutes left 
in the second period of play. You already know what's going to happen. Protus puts home a rebound past Corpusalo into a wide open net. A uh, bit of a weird big rebound there for, uh, you know, Jonas Corpusalo. But Chikorin and Jacob Bernard Docker also got crossed up on this play. So don't really know if you can blame the goalie. I don't really know if you can blame the defense. It's just kind of a wacky play that results in the back of the net. That happens sometimes as the Capitals go into the third period up by a goal and a huge, huge moment and momentum swing for the Capitals because at that point Ottawa yeah the shots weren't high but Ottawa definitely was playing far better um, than they were in that first period of play but we go to the third period where Ottawa is looking to play spoiler and they do just that with under 10 minutes left in the third period of play Ridley Gregg puts it home glove side past Charlie Lindgren and the Sens tied at two a beautiful passing play here between Eric Brandstrom and Shane Pinto to find really Greg streaking through the middle and Ottawa takes advantage and the Capitol fans are stunned as Ottawa is on upset watch as they tie it at two apiece. And what's really impressive about this is the Capitals early on in that third period had a five on three. So Ottawa killed off the penalties, regained some momentum and then tied it here. They really, you know, they've gone down a lot. I mean a lot this year early, but they've shown a lot of fight in those games as well. So um, obviously in a lost season, I'm not about to take moral victories away, but it is good to see that even in irrelevant games, this team will fight back once in a while. So that is great to see. That is certainly encouraging. Hopefully they don't have to fight back as much next year. Hopefully they can just take the lead early and cleanly win the game. Um, but you know what? When the games don't matter, it makes for some entertaining hockey. And, you know, that will continue going into the overtime period as the entertainment continues. The Capitals get a huge point, but of course they need those two points. So we go to overtime, and this overtime would not last long as, you know, Ian Mendes pointed this out. <laughs> I don't know what the Capitals Arena DJ was thinking. They played Enter Sandman uh, just before overtime, and it's pretty symbolic. As Sandman, the snake, Jake Sanderson, wins it in overtime. Ottawa comes back. They take down Washington for their first win in April as Ottawa takes down the Capitals 3-2 and a huge win for Ottawa as they play spoiler to Washington. The OTGWG by Jake Sanderson is the first of his NHL career, so huge there for Sandy. It's also his 10th career goal of the year. Of course, career high in goals, so congratulations to Sanderson for that. And by the way, if that's not enough, Sanderson also has scored in back-to-back -back games. So kudos to Jake Sandman Sanderson, who had a fantastic game. We'll talk about that in the post-game thoughts. But a huge goal there through a screen Lindgren to give Ottawa the win in overtime. And you know what? With five games left now after this game, I will always take an overtime win. So, so exciting. Um, and yeah, look, I don't really want Detroit to make the playoffs. At least the Caps got a point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, wow. What a game and what a pushback there for Ottawa in that third period. Very impressive, as I already mentioned. Killed off that five on three. Regained momentum. Had a couple of key saves from Jonas Corposalo. I don't know how the Capitals, frankly, didn't score on a couple of those chances. Frankly, Charlie Lindgren, by the way, had a couple of huge saves. Uh, Matthew Joseph had a beautiful toe drag move um, uh, that, you know, went right to Claude Giroux on a nice pass. He was robbed on the stretch save from Lindgren. Also late in the third period of play. And I have Pinto and Batherson on my fantasy team. I'm in the finals right now. I need the points. I'm down by a bit. Uh, they connected for almost a beautiful goal with under two minutes left. So there were a lot more offensive looks in that third period. The ice definitely opened up a bit. Um, but overall, it was a tight game that Ottawa sneaked by with a win. Now the shots were equal at 21 apiece between Ottawa and Washington, but if you look at the other stats, I mean hits 39 to 24, um, that usually shows that one team is trailing the other quite often, they're chasing the puck. That was not the case today though. I think both teams played a pretty even, uh, you know, style of game, but I think guys like Parker Kelly, Mark Kaslik, of course, Brady Kachuk, who had six hits again today, 16 yesterday, six today, that is actually, I mean, do the math, that's actually insane. 22 in the last 24 hours is absolutely bonkers for Brady Kachuk in terms of hits. Um, but yeah, I think this was an even game and it just shows um, the tenacity of that bottom six. As I mentioned, a lot of physical guys in that bottom six a day due to injuries, and it shows in the hit chart, that's for sure. Now, if you look at the face-off difference, this was also interesting. With a guy like Norris and Stusla out, you wouldn't think Ottawa would dominate the face-off battle, but they did. They led the face-offs. They won a decisive amount, 34 to 21, 61 to 38 were the percentages. 
Um, they did a very good job there in the faceoff circle, which is great to see, uh, especially against a team like Washington, who has a couple of good centers in there for sure. Um, now, if you look at the statistics for this game, first, the Yonos Corpusalo faced 22 shots, made 20 saves for a 909 save percentage. Um, didn't steal the game by any means, but definitely didn't lose the game for Ottawa either. He was effective. He was strong. No issues at all. Let's go. Sorry. 67s, 5-1. Um, they're about to take down Brantford. Take them down in six games um, to upset them and move on to the second round. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get a reaction here uh, before my video, but you love to see it. Let's go 67s. But back to my point. Uh, so Corpusalo, solid game uh, overall. And, um, you know, especially in a back-to-back -back situation, it's great to see him playing so well. As I already mentioned, Jake Sanderson was flawless today. Just over 25 minutes of ice time. He had three blocks, one hit, a shot on goal that ended up into the net for the OTGWG. As I already mentioned, Brady Kachuk, another six hits today. Makes it 22 in the last 24 hours. Absolutely mind-blowing. Had an assist as well today and two shots on goal in just under 22 minutes of ice time. And as I mentioned, Parker Kelly and Mark Kaslik both were pretty aggressive today, throwing around the body. Kaslik five hits, three shots on goal, including that goal to tie things up there at one. Um, and then for Parker Kelly as well, who I think had a pretty strong game as well, had a lot of hits, five hits, a block as well, and an assist. Um, so a very strong game for Ottawa's bottom six today. Uh, Boku Yamama as well, uh, two hits. So, you know, they were throwing around the body, that's for sure, which helped Ottawa get some offensive opportunities. Now, besides that, the next Sens game is on Tuesday against the Florida Panthers. Uh, another Kachuk Bowl in Florida. Let's see how that one goes. Hopefully, Ottawa's not embarrassed yet again by Florida. Remember, Ottawa three times this year has given up uh, a goal on the opening shot or two to Florida. Three times, yeah, three times this year. Hopefully we don't make it four. Now besides that, I'm going to leave it off with your favorite part and my favorite part of these videos. The Tankathon spin. We have five games left now in the year, so we got really nothing else to hope for other than a high and top draft pick. So with that, let's begin the draft roll. Here we go. Can Ottawa get some luck on and off the ice in this one? Here we go. Guess not. All right. Shout out to Washington. They jump up the third. Uh, second roll, Montreal, Ottawa stays at seven. And then third roll. All right, so we just have not been getting any luck as of late with these. But hey, at least we won the game today. What can I say? But yeah, besides that, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. And I will see you all Tuesday when Ottawa takes on the Florida Panthers. I'll see you all then. Let's go, go, baby. Let's go. 67's off the round number two. They take down Brentford in six games. A decisive 6-1 victory today in game five. Woo! What an upset over the Bulldogs. A team full of talent. What a huge upset in the first round as Ottawa moves on to round numero deux. What a win there for the 67's. And an electric game where the offense was clicking. So I just wanted to provide that little bit of an update there. As I was editing the video, the 67's secured... The big victory in game number six. What a series, and shout out to the Brantford Bulldogs and their fans, by the way. It was a hell of a series, back and forth, high action. Um, Brantford is a hell of a team, and um, the 67s just were a little bit better. So, shout out to them. Let's go to 67s off the round number two. And hey, if this keeps up, I might have to make some videos covering our 67s. Come on, tear that X off. Tear that X off. There it is. What a win. What a win. Well earned. Well earned for the 67s. Let's go! Besides that, I'll see you all soon. Go send us go.